was what TSM was aiming for last match, but they didn't do it. All right, it's match two of a best of three. TSM must win or they drop down into the loser's bracket of this double elimination group stage. They do not want to be there. They want to make it through. It is Sky and Adagio off the board. So what, the, what they're going to have to do here, Team Solo mid, they have, to, they have two picks coming up first and they have to use them really well. I'm assuming that we're going to see a Black Feather coming out of these guys. And they know that because they have that gap closer, it's very good to go up against um, Dienzio on that Vox. All right, we'll wait and see how Team Solomon responds to that Vox pick. That has to be just a shot in the arm for Halcyon Hammer's velocity, knowing already, yeah, we got Dienzio on that comfort pick once again. And this is the perfect chance for Team Solomon to actually make sure that they're counter, hearing, uh, counter picking against this Vox, getting somebody to execute them really fast. but. These guys, they have to notice, they have a Ringo, they have an Arden. They're gonna have to finish this game really early or they will lose out the entire series. Now Flash X, you know, he, it, Arden is his signature hero. You know, remember the million dollar punch coming out of the VIPL. Uh, that's gotta, you know, probably a little bit shift the mood there as well that he's gonna get to play Arden. Well, with Arden, like, the way they position himself is really strong. And with Flash X, he's always like manning the front zone for his team. He's always making sure that he's soaking up as much abilities as possible. But the same thing here is like, we saw the Ringo matchup against the Vox matchup. And you, with Ringo, you have that early game advantage. And if they're not gonna use it to their, um, to their liking, they won't benefit from it at all. All right, we're seeing Velocity hovering that rhyme pick. That would be dramatic. And they do lock it in, Rome. And I love this rhyme pick coming out of Velocity because we were looking at all the rhyme uh, rhyme being played yesterday and I had to say Aloha on Rhyme was devastating. People were just running away from him even though he was at low health and we didn't see that in the other matches. All right, we'll wait and see how Team Solomid responds. If you were the coach in their corner, who would you tell them to pick in response? To be honest, they have to pick somebody that's very early, um, but preferably with a bit of range because going up against a Rhyme, you can't get up too close. And Petal certainly can counter that rhyme, try to keep her distance. Let's find out how this will go with our casters, Action Jackson and Vettius. Thank you very much, Playoff Beard and Rome. We're here for the second game of the series, and if it's anything like the first one, Man, I, I cannot wait. <laughs> oh, it, should be a, it should be a cracker of a game. I'm really looking forward to it. So we get to see some pedal going up against some rhyme, which I think should be pretty cool. cool. Uh, so we'll get more into that as we jump into the fold. Yeah, this is going to be super good between these two teams. Halcyon Hammer's Velocity currently in the lead with one game up over Team Solo Mid, who are the first seed of the tournament. Guys, make some noise. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is going to be game two between Halcyon Hammers, Velocity versus Team Solar Mid. I think this should be one, as I said, cracker of a game. I'm really excited. So let's go into this panel pick a little bit more. You heard, you heard uh, Playoff Beard and Rome briefly mention it just before the draft came out, and it's going to be very much about this pedal trying to kite away from the rhyme, constantly keep him at arm's length and prevent him from getting to close the gap and use that fortified health that makes him so tanky in these skirmish fights that he always looks for. Yeah, and I want to talk about Aloha as well, because yesterday we saw some incredible plays out of this guy on Rhyme. Dienzio sets him up for success, though, and I think that's the big storyline here. Just jumping around, staying close to Aloha. So if anyone wants to dive onto Dienzio, they got to soak all of those Winter Spires. He lands so many good Valkyries as well. He always holds on to it at just the right oh, moment yeah. and makes sure that the priority target is always the one that has to deal with that Valkyrie. So especially on patch 1.15, where he's actually had some pretty significant buffs, it's not really surprising that we're seeing so much more rhyme in the current mana. So right now, Halcyon Hammers, they've rotated up to the lane because TSM had the jungle advantage. They were in a better position. So you saw this in game one. You often rotate up to that lane if you want to get a little bit of experience, a bit of extra farm. But Cole the Meek, he goes for an aggressive invade and he might get punished for it. Yeah, he's got to be careful here. Is able to trampoline over the wall. I don't know if they're going to be able to Land. find him before he gets the recall down. Oh, oh not quite. Aloha doesn't have the range on the Winter Spire to cancel that one. So Cole the with a fairly successful invade, not quite as good as last game, though. Well, he, they didn't have, or oh, Velocity even didn't have their run really fast boots on, so they weren't able to catch him out of that one. But Cole the Meek, able to successfully steal away some of the back camps, is going to give them a nice early advantage. Uh, but so far, nothing too exciting happening in the early game. And as I say that, both teams grouping up in the jungle. Yeah, they got to be careful here. Dienzio, he's not the late game box we know from last game. And he goes down. Team Solo mid picking themselves up. First blood. Aloha. He's now on the run. Cold Meek trampling for trying to get onto him. The winner Spires giving Aloha a little bit more tankiness. A little bit 
more ability to try and get out of here. But look at this, Cole the Meek just on the hunt. Vayne's gonna come and back up Aloha. Is it gonna be enough though? Aloha jumped on by Flash X as well. He wanted to turn it around, but couldn't quite find it. Aloha, he's so nearly gone oh. down. He oh, Mick, she finds it. Flash X, he's super low, but he actually does get away unless D'Enzio can find some way in here. Doesn't look like he can. Team Solo mid, they're 2-0 up. So Team Solo mid this time turning up the aggression. They have the Ringo, they have the Arden, which Flash X for me seems so much more Whoa, comfortable D'Enzio. on. D'Enzio going for the 2v1. Very boldly trying to make that fight happen. Mixi might be able to pick it up. He does indeed. Two quick kills. In fact, three kills on Mixi already at three minutes into the game. This guy has a kill a minute. Early game Ringo, you definitely cannot underestimate it. Yes, he had a couple changes made to him, but on the most recent patch, but that weapon power uh, Ringo in the early game is still devastating. And if you go for the one versus one, especially if you're Vox, you're always going to fall behind. So a little bit of a bad decision coming out from D'Enzio and he ends up paying for it with his life. So great start so far for TSM. Yeah, they are doing a good job, but they got to be careful moving into the later stages of the game against that Rhyme, against that Vox. Cole Meek is pressuring every single part of this map, though. Velocity having to deal with him and his Munions all over the shop. Right now, Vayne is looking to just stop there, engage a little bit. Stuns him on the Scout Trap, gets that extra damage down as a result. Taking out a lot of these Munions as well. Might be a small window of opportunity to engage on Cole Meek, but not much. He does get those seeds back very quickly. See, Vayne's actually taking so much damage just trying to clear these. He's going to have to pop that Storm Guard bubble, try and run away. Flash X can't close the gap either, so he will make it out this time. We've got D'Enzio rotating down here. They might want to stop this invade as a threesome. Flash X, he is going to go down. D'Enzio and Aloha finding themselves that kill. Now Cole Meek, the next target. Doesn't have a lot of energy left, but he does have a lot of damage, and he's going to threaten them enough that Vayne's, D'Enzio, and Aloha are all going to back away for now. The thing is, while all this is happening, Mixi is just free to farm up in the lane. And oh, whoa. what? He might get a double here. He just found two quick kills on people rotating back in the lane. Mixi is on fire at the moment. Five kills. He's actually over a kill a minute now. Jeez, Mixi not afraid to make those plays. He realized that last game, a couple of misplays, a couple of mispositions. He is changing that up in game two. Really wants to put the foot down onto that Halcyon Hammer's velocity. And already with 5-0 zero, and 0, what a great way to start for this Ringo. It really is. Team Solo mid, they had their backs in the corner after that last game. Of course, if they were to lose this one, they would be moving down to the elimination phase. So they know they need to step it up a notch, and Mixi so far, the guy to do that. Cole Meek also putting on a lot of pressure, backed up by Flash X. They are invading so much against the Velocity members. Veins and Aloha, they want to fight this, but they just can't yet. They don't have the strength to win a two versus two. No, they definitely don't. I mean, just look at Cole Meek. He's currently sitting at level six. Looks like he might be working towards a very early Shanna I actually had uh, uh, a conversation with Forecourt and Zaken about this, and they were telling me how you will often see the early Shanna class because it makes your Munions that much stronger, makes them a little bit tankier as well. So uh, it just makes more sense to work towards that Kaldemik. early item. But Kaldemik, he's getting caught out. He does get face checked there. Aloha doing some good damage. That's a lot of damage. Him, Kaldemik is Valkyrie. Valkyrie. Valkyrie snipes him. But look at this. Flash X finds one return. Dienzio is going to be able to get away. It's a trade between both of the junglers. Not the worst situation for either team. No, it certainly isn't. The thing I really want to highlight is the fact that the gold advantage is in the favor of Team Solo mid, but House and Hammers have been here before. Seven to three, Mixi. Look at the pressure he is able to put on the veins, forcing him right back to that turret. Well, Mixi doing so much damage. Uh, just having a quick look at his items. Wouldn't be surprised to see very early Sorrow Blade come out of him, given the fact that he's got that heavy oh, steel on the facing Hellfire spear. Brew. He's trying to go for a kill maybe here. Oh, D'Enzo just barely able to get back behind that turret. Mixi is keeping me on the edge of my seat, man. He keeps making these aggressive maneuvers. But he has to be very wary of his energy these days because on patch 1.15, his uh, Toiling Silver did have an energy cost increase, which means you can't just spam it anymore. Aloha, sitting in the tri-bush. But that is going to be a, a very easy secure going up for Team Solo mid. And I think that's expected. Velocity at this point in the game cannot look to fight. They need to stall out. They need to prioritize on farm and just making sure that they can pick up their major items before really looking for a fight against Team Solo mid. Yeah, but guys, I want to stress the fact that this game, although Team Solo Mid have been putting on so much pressure, is by no means over. Velocity, they're not actually that far behind in the gold, just about 1.5k. And if you look at last game, this is the kind of early game that Velocity had, and Team Solo Mid almost came back into it. They certainly did. I, I 
Uh, but the difference I feel between the, this game and the last game is Velocity very much controlled the early game. They controlled the momentum. And now that Team Solo Mid are in a position where they control the momentum, you can see this tension mode that has been picked up by for Mixi, I feel makes a lot more sense because they're going to try and ride on this momentum, use this early game item to just try and snowball the lead that they've already began to accrue. Yeah, they're definitely going to be looking to push the tempo a Look little at bit. Look Taking a lot of damage. He's got some fortified health. Flash X taking a few turret shots. Veins finds the stun, but he's got to be careful about backing away here. Mixi, does he have the Hellfire Brew available? Not for the next 16 seconds so he's not gonna be able to go for any kind of a snipe here Vayne since their last exchange has leveled up twice <laughs> versus only the one of Mixi so he's gonna be a little bit tankier now harder for Mixi to just burst through looks like Velocity are doing a decent job of checking this aggression from TSM they certainly are they're just buying their time they're not trying to force anything if TSM decides to overextend underneath the tower that'll be the opportunity Velocity are looking for to go for a fight but at the moment, they're just going to play it passively. And TSM, see this as an opportunity to invade uh, Velocity's jungle, steal away those back camps, and just build up an even uh, bigger advantage over their opponents. So TSM so far playing the map very smartly and doing the very best to just uh, to just use the advantage uh -oh. that they've been able to develop. Flash X, he might be caught out here. He does have Mixi to run to. Dienzio jumps Dienzio. forward, not realizing the other members are there. Dienzio is going to go down to those Munions. Valkyrie does some nice damage, but it's not going to be enough. There's a gauntlet. Vayne's stunned up. Aloha wants to turn it around. He knows he can't run away, but he just doesn't have the damage. And Team Solo Mid picked themselves up two kills off of Velocity's overly aggressive play. So Dienzio overextends right there. He pushes forward. We saw this from him in the last game where he he just tries to be the carry before he's really in a position to do so. He tries to make that play, ends up getting punished for it, and because Rhyme has very little mobility at this point in the game, well, I mean, it's Rhyme, he naturally doesn't really have that much mobility anyway. TSM are easily able to capitalize. They get themselves a turret. They're going to secure another gold mine and they're just going to extend that gold lead even further. Yeah, at this point, it is definitely worth having a look at the gold lead because when it was one and a half thousand, that's that's pretty manageable. But now that we're sitting at, uh, you know, more like three and a half thousand, things are starting to snowball pretty heavily for Team Solo Mid. So Velocity, they really got to check themselves before they wreck themselves. They got to be careful about picking these fights. And just look at the items now. Frostburn finished for Cold Amigo. So he decided to go for that early utility. He wanted to make sure that his Munions could just stick on to the enemy target by getting that constant slow being applied to your enemies. It just makes it so much easier to set up Mixi for success. He's gone for the Sorrow Blade combined with the Tension Bow. This now that we're at the mid game point, he just does so much damage and Dienzio cannot hope to compete until he completes his Broken Myth. So Velocity just have to play on the back foot for the time being. They have to wait for TSM to make a massive mistake, which I honestly just don't feel, given the experience that TSM have, they're going to be making. Yeah, I don't feel like they're going to be making any massive mistakes, but then again, if Velocity can make it late enough into the game, Mixi is going to fall off a little bit. So that's what yeah. they're going to be aiming to do. Dienzio and Aloha do become extremely potent, especially as a pair later on. Right now, TSM, I like what they're doing. They're going for the minion miners to just push their advantage a little bit more, make sure they have momentum in the lane as well as the jungle. That's exactly right. By having constant pressure being applied to Velocity, notice that they have to constantly share farm between all three members, which means that Dienzio isn't allowed to get as much gold as he wants. He's not allowed to get as much experience. And if you just look at the farm comparison, only 40 CS on Aloha compared to 62 on Kaldameek, just because he's not allowed any of his jungle. Gauntlet goes down. Oh, but Dienzio is able to reflex block that. He deals with the Hellfire Brew as well. Valkyrie on the Flash X does a lot of damage. They're going to find the kill, but it's a trade. One kill for a turret, a good one for TSM. They're going to be quite happy with that, I would imagine. Question is, can Velocity find anything off the back of that? Maybe a gold miner here, but it's not exactly stacked that much. I think they might try and go on to Cold Meek. Pretty hard to close that gap against the pedal, though. Yeah, they're, they're just going to secure themselves an objective. They feel like they need to pick something up off the back of that kill. And TSM, as you rightly said, they're going to be pretty happy with that. Big objective gained uh, by taking away that turret is going to give you a lot more map control. You can play a lot more aggressively. Uh, and giving away Flash X is not that much of a problem. They're basically saying, hey, look, if you bought more wards, maybe we would have saved you, but you're not <laughs> doing that. You're not picking up those scout traps, so we're just, we're going to leave you to die. Maybe it'll teach him a lesson, but given the fact that he's picked up three flares and still no scout traps, tells me that he hasn't learned his lesson yet. Well, I mean, scout traps, you can walk around them. Flares, they cover a huge area. They do. So long as you keep putting down the flares, you have even better vision. Yeah, well... 
perspective. <laughs> it costs more, though. I mean, it's a luxury price. Yes. Uh, and but given that he's TSM now, maybe he can afford it. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> <laughs> well, as he said, he is full-time now, so uh, full-time professional player. Anyway, having a look at TSM Kill the Meek, look at the difference. Level 12 Kill the Meek to level 8 Veins. Uh, if he tries to go in that yeah. fight, he's going to struggle. Dienzio only level 10 to the level 11 Mixi. Very big level advantages. It, the big thing about this is the overdrive, the second overdrive that you get once you hit level 12. It's, it's absolutely monumental. And if you just have a look at Kull Meek, he's already gone for that second overdrive in his ultimate. So he's going to be doing way more damage when it comes to that burst. Uh, a lot more sustain as well. And TSM, they're going to go for the siege. Yeah, they are. They've got some minions here. One of the big ones to try and put some pressure on the turret. Dienzio already taking a lot of damage, jumping into the gauntlet to try and pressure Mixi. That's a Valkyrie, but it's hopped away from by Cole Meek. Three people get splashed on by the Hellfire Brew, but actually Velocity Look doing Mixi. quite good here. Mixi very low on the health department. Vayne's trying to keep up with him, but they got to turn this one around. Mixi finds the kill, and now they're in a great position to siege onto this turret. Aloha. Got to be careful about biting off more than he can chew here. He's going to do some nice damage onto Flash X, but he doesn't have much energy. He's going to be going down. Dienzio, he heals up just a little bit from the fountain. He's trying to go for the fight. He finds one, but he can't get any more. Mixi finds it. That's the ace, and that's going to be another turret for TSM. So Velocity just aren't able to get the team fight that they really needed, and what a great opportunity that was there that they just could not capitalize. TSM were on the retreat. Three super low health members that all you needed to do if your Velocity is clean that fight up, but you'd already burned so much just to stay alive and defend that turret. But when you eventually go for the re-engage, TSM have already regained all of their health off the back of that Fountain of Renewal, and Velocity end up paying for it. You had Veins walking up on the front line. He's not that tanky at this point in the game. He's decided to go for that contraption rather than the Warhorn, which makes engages so much harder. And Velocity just are really struggling right now to find the right fights. Yes, Dienzio did his work at the very end of the fight, but wasn't able to come out ahead against Mixi, who has now completed the Tyrant's Monocle. Things are looking really rough for Velocity in the second game. If Mixi wasn't 8-0, I think Dienzio would have done his thing yeah. that he always does and just cleans up there. But I feel like maybe Velocity just a little bit too far behind to find that good fight. That said, they're still not out of it. Two turrets left. Kraken spawning in 10 seconds there or thereabouts. Team Solo mid, they're going to be looking to pick that one up and go for a big push. But let's take stock of the bigger picture here. Massive gold lead, 6,000 for Team Solo mid. The gold mine just captured right yep. as the Kraken efficient. spawns. Very efficient. 39 gold, that, that's a lot of money, man. That's like a health potion. Yeah, that's... You know? uh, it's not what, quite a scout worth. trap, though. Look at the infusions picked up. Both teams, both posturing for a fight right now. Flares being used, Hellfire Brew. Yeah, this is going to start the fight off. Potentially, Aloha is going to be the target. That's a gauntlet going down. Dienzio stays out of that one, but Vayne's taking a lot of damage on the front line. He is the first to fall. Now Flash X goes on to Aloha. The Valkyrie comes out right before he dies. Dienzio, he's still very healthy. He might be able to turn this one around if he just kites for long enough. Mixi, though, he has huge amounts of damage. He trades the kill. Kolomik and Flash X still alive. They're going to go on to the Kraken. So that was just demonstrating the advantage that TSM have over their opponents. Very easily able to crush the support that is Catherine. You're just not tanky enough. There's so much more damage available when you have Mixi hitting so hard onto the front line. And on top of that, a beautiful gauntlet to actually separate both veins away from Dienzio and Aloha, who neither of them actually have reflex blocks, so there's nothing they can do against that gauntlet when it comes down. It was just... It was just Team Solomid getting a very well executed team fight that Velocity could not respond to. So they're going to pick themselves up the Kraken and they're going to be looking to try and end this game with this next push. I like that Cold Meek kind of left Flash X to do the Kraken by himself. It actually bought time for the respawn of Mixi. So they're going to have a better push or at least a, a better timed push with the Kraken now. We've got 14 kills to five. Massive gold lead for Team Solomid. They want revenge for that game one, which I mean, they were as close as you can possibly be to taking home. They want to show why they are the first seed in this tournament. They want to show TSM why they picked them up. This could be the fight to make it happen. Dienzio eating that Hellfire Brew. Mixi starts running forward, gets that one auto attack. He's been playing very safe on the back line. Look at Vayne just get melted. The Kraken still full health. Dienzio tries to do what he can, but he just doesn't have enough damage right now. Aloha, very ineffectual with these Winter Spires. Can't really put the pressure down. Dienzio wants to jump on the Mixi, but Koldemik, he's got his back. 
This fight is not close. Team Solar mid, they're gonna pick up game two, and we're gonna be heading into blind pick. Much cleaner game from Team Solar mid. This is what we were expecting to see from them in game one, and it all came down to Mixi on that Ringo. Phenomenal early game, 5-0-1.